The Muslims have defeated the Persians under Umar anhu. They are cutting in the heart of the Byzantines now where they've cut up the territories of the Roman Empire. And Jerusalem in particular, Al-Quds, is now under siege from all directions. The Muslims have taken Damascus. They have taken Egypt. They have taken the land of Jordan. And they are now surrounding Jerusalem from all ends, but they don't want to spill blood in Al-Quds. Four whole months, the Muslims were camped around Al-Quds and the negotiations took place with the Patriarch of Jerusalem in particular. His name is Sophronius. Sophronius said, I want the Khalifa of the Muslims to come and assume the keys of Jerusalem. He said, the one who is spoken about in our scripture should come and assume what is rightfully attributed to him. And what that means is that Ka'b ibn al-Ahbar became a Muslim. He was a Jewish rabbi that would become Muslim later. He said that in the scriptures, it was said that the follower of the Prophet to come would take the keys of Jerusalem with patched garments and high ethics. So Sophronius interpreted that to be Umar anhu, rightfully so. He said, send the one about whom we hear about his justice and we'll give him the keys. Shar Habir said, you know what? Why don't we send Khalid ibn al-Walid anhu and tell him it's Umar. <laughs> He's big. I mean, he's physically the size of someone that could be, you know, you could maybe interpret him to be Umar. And he can go and he can just handle this affair for us. And, you know, he had a similar appearance apparently to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And that didn't work at all because by that point, Khalid radiallahu anhu became famous in Asham. Why? He's this hero in all of these battles, Yarmouk included. So, no, this isn't going to work, right? So, Sophronius didn't fall for it. The Byzantines didn't fall for it. They said, listen, we want Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu to come. Abu Ubaidah writes the letter to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu to come to Al-Quds. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was placed in charge of al Medina by Umar radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu makes his way out to Jerusalem. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu decides to make this entire journey, the man who would sleep out in the open on his shoes with one camel and one servant and no army with him. And I want you to imagine the description of how he looked. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not wear a turban. Umar radiallahu anhu did not wear a helmet. So his head was bare. The garment that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was wearing was a white garment and it had 17 patches on it. He has absolutely nothing to suggest royalty. The most powerful man in the world takes a trip from Medina to Jerusalem by himself with a servant with no army, fearing no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and without any of the appearance of a dignitary of the time to go assume the keys of Jerusalem. It gets better. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he tells the servant, he says, listen, you and I are gonna take turns. We're gonna split this trip 50-50. You ride the camel 50% of the time, I ride the camel 50% of the time. So for half of this trip, Umar radiallahu anhu is going to pull in the desert the reins of this camel while the servant sits on top. And they're gonna take turns because that was the adil, that was the justice of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. As they are making this journey, Umar radiallahu anhu to Jerusalem, him and the servant, they start to get closer to Palestine. The servant, it's his turn to get on the camel and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu to pull based on the way that it was divided. Umar radiallahu anhu says, get on the camel. <laughs> and he says, yeah, Amir al-Mu'mineen. They're not waiting for me. They're waiting for you. They're not waiting for me. Like, come on, like, it's okay. I understand. I get it. You know, it's already generous of you enough that you split this 50-50 for this entire journey. Umar radiallahu anhu insists. He says, get on the camel. I'm going to pull the rein. It's 50-50. We agreed. Half-half. And he said, honor is to the one who fulfills their trusts. So I don't care if people are waiting on me and they see me pulling a camel. Who cares? It gets worse. They're walking into Palestine and Umar radiallahu anhu falls in a puddle of mud. Allah decreed it that way. <laughs> so this white garment that already had 17 patches on it is now covered in mud. By the time Umar radiallahu anhu gets there, the people have lined the streets to watch the reception of the key given from the hand of the patriarch Sophronius to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is right as he is about to make his entrance into Jerusalem. Some of the Sahaba come to meet him as he's about to come in. Abu Ubaid al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu sees him and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, can you change? Can we get you some armor? Can we go buy you something? Can we put a helmet on you? He's starting to argue with him to say, you know, why don't you wear something that's more befitting 
Umar عنه, responds with the most famous answer that we have ever heard. We are a people who Allah has honored through Islam. When we seek it through anything else, Allah will humiliate us. If we seek honor through them, Allah will humiliate us. And there comes Umar عنه, walking into Jerusalem, <laughs> still with the servant on his camel, with a white garment with 17 patches covered in mud. And the people are just looking and saying, who is this man? What is this religion? What are these ethics? And SubhanAllah, whoever humbles themselves for Allah, Allah elevates them immediately. All of the people started to praise the humility of Umar And Safranius, the patriarch, he says to a man like this, Jerusalem is handed over. And Safranius, the patriarch, he said to Umar with a leader like you, your people will never be defeated. And Umar enters in and that was a momentous day. The first thing that is done is that Umar and Safranius have to sign some paperwork. And that is the pact of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what's known as al-shurut al-umriya. The way that it's introduced, subhanAllah, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, this is a promise, a covenant that is given from the slave of Allah, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the commander of the Muslims. The gist of that pact is obviously one where there are concessions that are going to be made by the Christians in Jerusalem in exchange for the protection of their lives and the protection of their churches and the protection of their crosses and their security. If you're in Jerusalem at the time, you're watching the leader of the Muslims walk now with the patriarch of Jerusalem and he's literally giving him a tour of Al-Quds. He's showing him around Jerusalem. He takes him to where? The Holy Sepulcher, the holiest site in Christianity. Sophronius actually gives him the keys to the church. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu gives it to the Muslims and Umar anhu gives him a promise of its amana. This is one of the most beautiful things, subhanAllah, that till today, one singular family, a Muslim family has held the keys to the holiest site in Christianity. Until today, every morning, a man from that family goes and opens that church for the Christians. There have been documentaries about this. The man today, his name is Adib Judah, who literally, a Muslim man, goes every day and opens the Church of the Holy Sepulcher for the Palestinian Christians to go and to access that church. Then, of course, the famous incident takes place where the Adhan of Dhuhr comes in, the time of Dhuhr comes in, the patriarch, in an act of friendship. What does he say? He says, why don't you pray in our church? Umar anhu said, if I pray here, the Muslims are gonna turn this place into a masjid one day. So Umar anhu said, let me step out and pray outside. So my community doesn't steal your church later on. And literally the place that he prayed is now Masjid Umar. This meeting in Jerusalem was a reunion of Sahaba. Think about who is there. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Abu Ubaidah, Amr ibn As, Khalid ibn al-Walid, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Sharhabir, Bilal ibn Rabah and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he saw Bilal radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu embraced him for a long time and they both cried. And Umar radiallahu anhu says to Bilal, Ya Bilal, this is one of the days of the days of Allah. Can you make a dan for us, O Bilal? Bilal radiallahu anhu says, I took a promise on myself that I will never do a dan for anyone after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umar radiallahu anhu pushes him. And you know what he says to Bilal radiallahu anhu amongst the things? This would make the Prophet happy. And if he were here, he would have ordered you to do the same. Bilal, please make adhan for us. And so Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes to make the adhan. And when Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu got up to make the adhan, all of the Sahaba cried, including Bilal radiallahu anhu. Hearing his voice in this place where these Sahaba are together, and they said, SubhanAllah, that Umar radiallahu anhu on that day wept so much that he fell to his knees while Bilal was giving the adhan. And the Sahaba were consoling him. Why? They were remembering their time with the Prophet Now Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he wanted to know where exactly the Prophet led the salah. I want to pray in that exact place that Rasulullah prayed. Now at that time, that area was what? A dumpster. And when Umar radiallahu anhu sees it that way, Umar and the Muslims begin to clean up the dump themselves. So Umar gets down with the Muslims, with the Sahaba, and they are cleaning up that area. And then SubhanAllah, in that place, discovered that exact place where he would pray. In the first rakah, he read Surah Sa'at. Surah Sa'at has the mentions of Dawood alayhi salam and many of the happenings that took place in that area. But particularly, there was one ayah that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu read that shook him. Ya Dawood, inna ja'annaka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayna nasi bil haq wa la tatabi'il hawa. 
O Dawood, we have made you a Khalifa in this earth. So rule between the people and justice and do not follow your desires. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu shook when he read that verse. 